In the last two episodes, we covered the two most defining games in the SimCity series, SimCity Classic and SimCity 2000. Now, the series continues to grow as it attempts to polish what it's built for a more mainstream audience. Let's talk about the game that I came to love as a child, SimCity 3000. The development of SimCity 3000, while coming off the coattails of the massively successful SimCity 2000, was not without many hiccups and barriers. In 1996, plans were originally made to have SimCity 3000 be a fully 3D game. Not like the 2.5 isometric style that SimCity 2000 had been built off of. It was also planned to include more micromanagement than previous games had, and was set to release in late 1997. There were some concerns about whether a fully 3D game would be viable for the technology available, but that wasn't their only concern. At this time, despite the success of its SimCity series, Maxis was seeing some of the seams start to tear as they had seen multiple attempted game releases flop financially. SimCopter, the game I mentioned in the last video and one that is also near and dear to my heart, was probably one of the biggest culprits of this, costing Maxis much more than it made back. Now, currently there are a lot of talks about how Electronic Arts, known as EA, seems to have ruined the SimCity series in the modern gaming era, and we'll talk about that in a later episode. But at this point, in the mid to late 90s, Maxis needed help, so they were in talks to be acquired by EA to prevent them from going under, which is exactly what happened on June 8th, 1997. During E3, a trailer of SimCity 3000 was released, touting its 3D realism. That looks awful. It looks bad. Really bad. It reminded people too much of SimCopter, which had also been blasted for looking bad, and not at all of the style that they had come to love in SimCity 2000. Facing pushes from developers from within, and from both critics and EA from without, it was decided by Lucy Bradshaw, who was brought into Maxis by EA, that the original plan for SimCity 3000 would be scrapped, so they could start all over again. In the end, this was a smart decision. If SimCity 3000 had been released as it was, it would have likely been the capstone to a string of failures that would have likely ended the company's reputation with its player base and possibly the company as a whole. So the first release date of late 1997 was delayed to try and have it done before Christmas season of 1998, but it was delayed yet again, despite receiving a much more positive reception with its 1998 E3 appearance. They wanted to make sure it wasn't just done, but done right. Eventually the game was released in February of 1999, only a couple weeks before I was born actually. Maybe it was meant to be. In the end though, these delays were the right decision, because the game exceeded expectations, marking another hit in the SimCity series, selling a million copies in the first six months and five million over the course of its life, SimCity 3000 met financial and critical success. Although it didn't boast as radical of a difference from SimCity 2000 as 2000 did with the original, SimCity 3000 did take a lot of the core elements of SimCity 2000 and refine them down. They also were still able to use that new and updated technology with a more detailed simulation of city life, as well as boasting stylized and actually very attractive looking graphics, and not just for the time, but even now. SimCity 3000 remains the best selling version of SimCity on PC, selling 5 million copies worldwide, over twice as many as SimCity Classic. In May of 2000, SimCity 3000 Unlimited was released. Called by different names in different regions of the world, it added on landmarks, pre-made cities, scenarios, and a building architect tool reminiscent of SimCity 2000's Urban Renewal Kit, although I can actually use the building architect tool, so it gets a plus one from me. Beyond just adding scenarios though, 
it would actually let you build your own scenarios through Microsoft Access, a database management system. Unfortunately, this tool has become incredibly difficult to use since modern computers seem to be very resistant to letting it work, but I have gotten it to work on occasion. For me personally, this game means a lot to me. It, along with Civilization IV, defined large portions of my childhood. The music, composed largely by Jerry Martin, is frequently among my most played songs every year on Spotify's Wrapped, because the nostalgia mixed with the smooth jazz sends me back to simpler times. Now, however, it's time to see if SimCity 3000 lives up, not only to the hype, but to my own memories. Alright, and welcome to SimCity 3000. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. Terrain editor was a lot nicer in this one. The terrain already just looks a lot better. The whole game, even though they abandon 3D entirely, they definitely still kept with the aesthetic of 3D, which is really nice. Alright, this looks good to me. Let's go ahead and go. This is where you really start to see llamas come into the game, which is unexplained, but interesting nonetheless. And with SimCity 3000, they made it even more in-depth. So now you have three different levels of density of all these different things. You just got more stuff. My favorite thing about SimCity 3000 has always just been the car very cartoony aesthetic of it. 2000 is nice, it holds up pretty well, but the aesthetic of 3000 just, in my opinion at least, absolutely blows it away. Ah, what I was hoping would happen here was I was really trying to get uh, farms to show up. Maybe I have to take away the power. There's a way to make it so that farms do show up. Nope, they need power. There we go. See, a little farm showed up. I really like that about this game. I think this is the first one to introduce farms, and if I remember correctly, I think SimCity 4 also had farms, but I think they were actually like farm zones, so not quite the same. Honestly, not a ton for me to say right now. Uh, it's just a fun game I haven't had a chance to play in a while. I'm probably losing money every year. Actually no, I guess I don't have any services, <laughs> but you can... With a lot of these games, you can actually go without providing any services to your citizens for quite a while. Which I usually do, as all good mayors do. I do still have some gripes with this game, you know. Um, like, you can't... You can't z upgrade zones easily. You have to destroy the buildings and then upgrade them, which is uh, annoying. And you can't build roads through zones either. You have to destroy the building. Before you can build any roads through them. So here you can see that this is starting to uh, get really traffic heavy. So once I finish putting these pipes down, I'm going to try some traffic solutions. I really like the way the bus system works too. It's really simple. You just Put buses down, bus stops down, and bada bing, bada boom, bus system. Something that's interesting that they added to this one is the neighbors have a lot more of a use in this SimCity game. I don't know if there was really one in 2000, but I know in 3000, if you create a connection with your neighbors, you can trade power, trash, uh, water, other things back and forth, so you can either sell it to them or you can buy it from them.
All right, and just because I want this to go a little bit faster and I want to show you guys some more, I'm going to do something that I did a lot when I was a kid. Let's see if I can get this right. Alt C, there we go. I am weak. Now everything should be free. Yep. So let's get some services for everyone real quick. It wouldn't take too long for me to do this on my own, but I want to demonstrate some more aspects of this game real quick. And just make the city uh, develop a little bit faster. This is taking a while. Space debris. That's what I actually forgot about. I will hit that uh, siren for that one. One line over there, one line right there. Looks like we'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. Ah, nice, got nuclear. Throw some nuclear out there. So I don't have to worry about that again for a while. Oh! Uh, riot, I suppose? Well, while we're at it, let's build a nice on-ramp right there. And they really do cause a lot of havoc, don't they? You're just gonna put that there. Hopefully before those turn into fires. Is there another one I can't see? Oh, there is. Okay, cool. Nothing gets between me and my highways. All right. There we go. Got a very, very solid highway system going throughout my city. Taking people to and from. Oops. Ooh, that's not acceptable. We need a on ramps there. There we go. Highway system worthy of the Hind City name. Interestingly, I know the game just crashed. And I didn't save. Well, that was SimCity 3000. Uh, back to the video, I guess. I just wanted to jump back into my old city that I made a while ago just to say that I definitely think you need to play SimCity 3000 if you haven't before and if you haven't played in a while definitely need to go pick it up again 
it's a lot of fun. It's one of the strongest entries in the series. In some ways, I like it better than SimCity 4. I think that it takes pretty much everything in SimCity 2000 and refines it. There are a couple things I wish they had kept, like the intricacies with the industries, but honestly, 3000, hands down, one of the best city builders out there, period, in my opinion. So definitely check it out if you have the opportunity. It's on GOG for pretty cheap. It's a lot of fun. Go check it out. With the success of SimCity 3000 marking a narrow miss for what could have been the iceberg to Maxis's Titanic, we see the continued rise of SimCity's fame, but now under the purview of EA. And, in the next episode, we'll see that fame peak, with what some will argue is SimCity's best addition to the series, SimCity 4. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on to see more of my content. Leave a comment with your thoughts on this video or topics for the future, and if you're interested, I've also made plenty of other videos, so go check those out too. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.